So I am honored, just honored to be here today with Dr. Stella Michalidou, the president of the National Committee on Environment and Children's Health in Cyprus since 2004. And she was appointed by the Council of Ministers, former acting permanent secretary minister of health and director of the State General Laboratory of Cyprus. And there's so many things that we're going to talk about today from the nationwide campaign um, that's been developed to educate parents from the protections for children in the Macarius uh, the Third Hospital, as well as recommendations on schools and distance learning and recommendations by expert uh, medical authorities. Uh, Dr. Michalidu has more than 35 years experience and expertise in environmental chemistry, toxicology, and the impact of toxic chemicals on health with a particular focus on children's health. She previously served on the European Food Safety Authority Pesticides Residue Panel, the Scientific Committee on Health and Environmental Risks, the WHO Euro Environment and Health Committee, and she's been an expert for the UN Environment Program, the Technical Assistance and Information Exchange Instrument of the European Commission, and the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, among many other international bodies. She's also a member of the Advisory Council on Environmental Health of the International Pediatric Association, and that's been since June 2014. Um, as a coordinator of the Cyprus Children Environment Health Action Plan, she was coordinator of the UN De Development Program and a European Union research projects. She's the author of many scientific papers and documents, co-author of the Nicosia Declaration on Environmental Fields Radio Frequencies of 2017, signed by the Chambers of the Doctors of Cyprus and the Austria Vienna uh, Medical Doctors, and prepared for the Cyprus, oh, she's the principal author of the um, document prepared for the Cyprus Ministers of Health and Environment and the Cypriot Parliament on what to do about the possible impacts of radiation from Wi-Fi, mobile phones on fetuses and children. And she also was elected in 2007, the Cyprus Woman of the Year for the Environment. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Michalidou. Thank you, thank you very much. And it's a real privilege for me to be with you this, to this webinar and to be hosted by the Environmental Health Trust, which is a pioneer in the field. And we also um, appreciate very much our very close cooperation because we, we have a, com a, common, a common target. I mean, which the, is what is the best way to provide the citizens and in particular children the best and safer environment, an environment which is not affected that much by toxic substances or toxic radiation. And thank you very much and uh, big, uh, and um, really I, I will be glad to, to share our experience and I'm looking forward to continuing this uh, extremely good cooperation that we have with the Environment Health Trust. And uh, especially Dr. Davis and you, Theodora, uh, really, we, we re our relation is very strong and is very fruitful. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Well, I think what would be so important is to, to hear about the Cyprus National Committee on Environment and Children's Health and Children's Health, which is, uh, you know, I wish we had that in the United States uh, doing what you're doing, but tell me about the mandate and some of the activities that you've been okay. involved in. With my pleasure. Uh, this committee has been established in, since 2004 and it's uh, a multidisciplinary independent committee. All we are served on a volunteer basis. It comprises uh, by doctors, uh, chemists, uh, uh, teachers and many. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary one. Uh, the prime aim of this committee uh, the overall aim of this committee is to ensure prompt response to emerging threats and not fully established but well documented risks 
via the application of the precautionary principle. This is the overall aim because we, we focus to provide our children a safe environment. And um, more specific goals are to provide scientific support at policy level, uh, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, the Parliament. So we have an advisory role there and to raise awareness to the society in total, including parents, teachers, and doctors, and to educate people, and to educate doctors as well, to educate the, the population, uh, to implement in various areas. It's not only the radiation, it's also the passive smoking, uh, toxic chemicals, everything that is coming into the environment where the child is activating. So, um, this is this is our uh, prime goal and i think it's very essential to have such a committee in every country uh, the aim on 2004 which has been established under the budapest declaration signed by the european union and who is to establish these committees in every country mm. and why this is necessary because we know that risk assessment and risk management, many times because of ignorances, because of scientific gaps in the knowledge, uh, uncertainties, which are always involved in the risk assessment of chemicals and toxic factors. There are all, always gaps. And this uh, makes the risk management to be delayed. And you have the example for, of passive smoking, for instance. It took 100 years to establish legislation to control the risk from passive smoking. And this is, uh, is repeated, is repeated continuously. The same we have now with the uh, wireless radiation. It's the same, exactly the same situation. And we believe that in, in such a cases where we don't have the absolute proof of the risk, we have, we are obliged to implement precautionary principles to implement a lot of principles in order to protect the people, to be proactive, not let them go in, uh, become a, an experimental animals at the end. This is, this is our uh, overall aim here. And um, of course, uh, during the, the last years, we start with, um, with many, we had many activities, passive smoking, the painting, the safe painting of the people, the, uh, the uh, yeah, face painting, which involves a lot of risk for the child uh, because of the colors and what they do contain. We make a research on this and we prove this and we make a campaign some years ago. Of course, the last years, the, since 2017, 2016, we, we put a lot of emphasis on the uh, wireless radiation uh, because uh, the problem is growing, the exposure is growing and starts from the fetus up to adolescence, in, uh, the whole life of the child the, is exponentially developed, this exposure, through many, many sources. Second, the limits that we have and implemented also in the US, but also in European Union in most countries, it has been proved that are not adequate safety limits, are technical limits, not safety limits. Second, we know that, uh, third, we know that a lot of, um, let us say, of uh, new devices, which appears also in a form of toys for the children many times, or anything else, never have been tested in terms of health safety and never have been tested in terms of children's safety. How this can affect the growing um, brain of the child, how affect their behavior. And it is admitted by everybody. Also WHO and all the others who are more, let us say, conservative and says, look, uh, within the limits is okay, no problem. But all they admit that we need specific research focusing to children because children are unique. Children are not 
little at all. And this is, has been proved through our, um, let us say, all our work we have done so many years on chemicals. We all know that is totally different. So we need research to focus on this and we don't have this research. So this is, this is one, one big problem. The second problem is that we have a lot of advertisement, a lot of addiction which has been growing, not only at the level of the adults, but also at the level of children. And addiction to this electronics has been uh, recognized by WHO in 2018, specifically mentioned that this is a psychiatric problem, having all similarities with the addictions to drugs. So the problems are great. We know, and uh, this me, uh, brings me to the, uh, to the rationale and the content of the Nicosia Declaration uh, on 2017, which covers all the, the spectrum of this radiation. And uh, why we, we, we are so anxious to have this declaration? Because of the reasons I mentioned before, and because the risks and the impacts on health, especially on children's health, from the very limited child focusing research is very, very serious. And while we admit that some of the of the of those risks has not been fully proved, we have to admit this. We have still open questions. Again we have to admit this, but the documentation that we have so far is so strong that does not allow space of ignorance, does not allow space of waiting anymore. Mm -hmm. And knowing that the limits are not adequately protecting the children, and knowing that uh, the, the devices have not been controlled. And on the other hand, we know, and we have a lot of examples, we know that good practices to minimize exposure do exist, but the people has to get aware of this, understand the risk, understand what could be the impact on the children and practical, practical uh, tools, how to reduce this risk. So in 2017, we, we signed this declaration in, uh, in cooperation with the uh, Medical Association of Cyprus and the Medical Association of Austria Vienna, with whom we continue to work very closely. Now, the last years we worked very closely with the doctors with our doctors, uh, especially the Pediatric Association and the uh, Cypriot Association, the, uh, the organization of, of all doctors in Cyprus, mm -hmm. because we do, uh, we do believe that uh, this cooperation is extremely uh, important. First of all, uh, we know that uh, many doctors are not well aware of what this radiation means to health because simply this is not included in their curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's time that we have to push this to be part of the curriculum of the doctors because it's, it's one dynamically evolved potential environmental risk for the health. So uh, one reason is this. Secondly, the doctors, once they are uh, getting the information, they are uh, believed to this mandate that they have to transfer this knowledge at the level of parents are the most effective in persuading the, the parents because the parents uh, believe their doctors, trust their doctors. So we, we, we think that this is the best way to, to, to transmit those message to the parents. So the doctors is one pillar. The second pillar of our activities is the policy make, making uh, level. As I explained, we prepare a lot of memorandum and we, we propose things. Uh, for instance, we are proposing to the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education that uh, wireless uh, technology should not be used at schools and that uh, uh, the exposure of the children 
has to be evaluated based on biologically relevant criteria like the one uh, Europe M 2016, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, because these biologically relevant criteria are the most uh, relevant to the children. So uh, this is our proposal and because uh, to change the legislation, um, taking in mind, considering that this legislation is a European Union legislation, more or less, uh, is very difficult. So we said, okay, but when we come to the point that you have to evaluate whether the exposure in a school for a child is, is good or not, is high or, or, is, or is safe, we have to use the biological criteria. This is what we propose also under the declaration. This is one point. The second point is that we propose also to the parliament uh, and to the ministries that we should, it's time now because the technology is evolving very fast and we know whether or not 5G is deployed full or partially depends on the country and how fast it's going. One thing is sure that the exposure of the population is going to be increased. And this is very clearly stated in a report on the parliament in 2019. Uh, we know that the aggregation of all this um, radiation will create a lot of exposure, which will be further increased by the use of Internet of Things. So taking this into consideration, we firmly believe that we are at the, at the corner point where we have to reduce exposure. We have to take compensated measures to reduce exposure. And this is something to our, uh, we believe that it can be done to a certain extent. And uh, so we have proposed specific measures to the parliament in our recent intervention in 2019, when the issue of deployment of 5G was discussed. And they said for us, it's a red line, a red line for us, uh, I mean the committee and the medical doctor association. A red line will be reduction of the exposure. So we propose that we should have protective zones around the schools, the play yards, and the hospitals. Uh, and we propose that the communication, um, and the, also we propose that it should be um, a country, a, a countrywide campaign, which will be science-based and should be under the auspices of Medical Doctor Association and the National Committee. So we, we are going to give the science-based information to the parents, to the population, what it does mean, any application that are going to use in so-called smart houses, that this would create, each application will create additional exposure for the children. And uh, to the people has to, uh, we, we propose a new culture where they realize that, look, we have the technology. We cannot deny technology. The technology is advancing anyway, but we have to make the best use of this technology, to choose carefully what is essential and what is not to introduce in my house. For instance, to control my refrigerator or my washing machine. Uh, smartly, and everybody understands what I mean, is not the choice, is not essential, because the outcome of this would be fully addiction to the mobile phone of the mother of everybody in house. Everybody will be addicted on this, but the most important that there would be a, a more radiation in the home. And we proposed also in the declaration that the use of technology should be age related. We propose rational use of technology. We are not denying the technology, but this has to be done according to the age, take specific measures, uh, wireless should be prohibited in schools. And uh, in, this, uh, in this area, we embark also uh, try this uh, project which uh, 
eh, Theodora di Fersoretti, which is the Macario's third hospital in Cyprus, which is the main pediatric uh, hospital. It's modern pediatric hospital, actually. So we, we consider, uh, we start a pilot project uh, by uh, they, they activated the um, wifey in the in the um, uh, care intensive care units and in neonates units and uh, a parallel with uh, um, Aguaran is raising both for the staff the nurses and the other who are, which are working in this area, as well as the parents, that mobile phones should not be used in these chambers of the child, that they have to connect to the internet with wire, and uh, this hospital has a wired uh, uh, network. This, is, uh, this was easy to achieve. And to explain that uh, they can do, we, we provide a lot of material created. We use also some material from uh, Environment Health Trust and we are uh, acknowledge this, uh, this support. Uh, so we try to raise awareness because we realize that both the staff and the parents, they don't have an idea of what is meaning to the child by using their mobile phones uh, very close to the child and uh, watching videos or whatever, uh, take photos, but having uh, online connections at the same, or online connection, connection at the same time. So we explain to them that yes, you can get photos, yes, you can hear music, but you can have your mobile phone on flight mode downloaded before all this in your, in your phone and you can take photos is not necessary to have active mobile phone. So we, it was a very hard mandate. It, is not, it was not easy uh, because the people are fascinated, are addicted with their mobile phones. It's not so easy to introduce this culture. We still work on this, uh, but we make measures to, to show and to prove to the people that look the radiation, when the wife is on, we have this passive radiation. And we have also active radiation when you are downloading things on the computer next to the child. And when we deactivate all this and we have wire internet, then the levels of exposure of the children are following below the so-called uh, biological criteria, which can be considered a safe. I mean, unavoidable exposure, but a level which can uh, be not so damaging as the level we had with uh, wireless internet or mobile data. Now we aim uh, in September, hopefully, we start the second phase to the maternal units. And we are going also to create a new material for the pregnant women. We have already one video mm -hmm. of pregnant women. But we, we are going to, to deactivate also wife in this area and have only wire connection. And of course, we made a proposed, uh, proposal that uh, no, uh, new, uh, no antennas, new antennas should be installed around this hospital. Uh, in order to have, yeah, because at this moment we are lucky that the antennas which are providing the signal for 3G, 4G so far does not create a lot of, of uh, passive exposure inside the, um, the hospital because of the distance mm -hmm. to which these antennas are uh, so far. And uh, the, main, the main exposure comes from Wi-Fi and from the mobile phone use. This was what we found out of our research that we did, this pilot research. So now the recommendation is that we should keep the status quo for the Macarius Hospital and uh, also to be uh, the same, the same, let us say, situation should be applied to other hospitals, especially pediatric units and maternal units. Uh, this is what we did the last year. And uh, we make also a campaign. We had the posters which were uh, put on the buses and circulating all over Cyprus with a big message. Please protect me. 
please don't irradiate me with an umbrella, which uh, I, I think um, Theodora can show a picture of this to see uh, if possible. Yes, I can, I can put a picture up. Mm -hmm. Let me mm -hmm. get it. Um, yeah, you this is what we, we put on the bus, yeah. You see, uh, it, this is in, in Greek, but the message is the same which appears in English on the leaflet. So, uh, learn how to protect me. This is a clear message which we send to the parents, we send to our population, to our teachers, to everybody which is involved with the children, with children's life. Mm -hmm. And you also had um, part of your recommendations on distance learning. I took yeah. a snapshot from your from the website. Yeah, is... yes. you are right. Uh, because of these coronavirus cases, as you know, uh, for, uh, for months the school were closed. And uh, I would say we are grateful that technology exists so that the children continue their education. But we uh, suggest and we provide very clear information, some material again taken from Environmental Health Trust. And we try to, uh, to formalize a, a small guide which explains to the parents, you can use wired internet for your children. You are not using wireless so that the children can have their education in a safe way. And we provide all the options of how to do this in the house with a very practical hints. And we also uh, provide uh, some uh, precautions that for those insisting on using Wi-Fi in house, at least they have to take certain precautions in relation to children. And these are provided also in this guidance, which we have it in English version in our website and in Greek version. We try, uh, not all, all our material is translated because of limited resources that we have for this, but we try to provide also for the English speaking people, uh, especially in Cyprus, uh, this uh, guidance. Uh, is this what, what I mean by changing of a culture? Here is a picture of, um, oh. from Macario's hospital. On the right hand is the director general of the hospital. Here is the doctor, which is uh, the director of the unit, Andrea Sergis, which is very, I'm grateful to him because we started the project discussing together and we decided and then we go to the director, which also was enthusiastic. Dr. Metzis helped us in, uh, in the measurements. He, he did all the measurements and we appreciate his help as well. Uh, yeah, this is a core team of the, of the Macarius project. And you donated, I'm going to go to the video in a minute, but for the our, um, Archbishop Macarius Hospital, there was a donation of computers too, so that there was access. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I didn't mention it because it's a donation coming. Oh. But since you asked me, yes, I, I make a donation myself. Uh, to facilitate the whole situation, the donation was on the memory of my husband, uh, Polis. And uh, this is a donation shown on the <laughs> picture, yes. Because so, uh, usually, you know, sometime uh, you need a seat budget to, to start with. Otherwise, if you start to ask money for buying this, buying that. So I, we wanted to give a start, a quick, a fast startup of the project. And I think we managed so far. Yes. So this is one of, um, you've talked about so many things from the, the three, three things, really, the addressing the, the doctors and having them have the information that they can provide to policy changes, to educational awareness of, of the public so that parents mm -hmm. can protect their children. And I mm -hmm. wanted to play, I have, there's, you have several videos, but this one is for parents. So I thought I might play it. There's, uh, there are translations at the bottom. Yeah. This is the okay. video that, that your committee uh, prepared that shared with the public. 
and Theodora translated it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Τα παιδιά μας εκτίθενται καθημερινά σε ένα ηλεκτρονικό νέφος το οποίο δημιουργείται από την ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπουν τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, tablets και οι συνδέσεις μέσω Wi-Fi και άλλα παρόμοια. Η ακτινοβολία αυτή, σύμφωνα με τον Παγκόσμιο Οργανισμό Υγείας, είναι πιθανώς καρκινογόνα για τον άνθρωπο. Σύμφωνα με νεότερες έρευνες, η ακτινοβολία αυτή είναι πιθανό να προκαλέσει και άλλες σοβαρές επιδράσεις στην ανάπτυξη και λειτουργία του εγκεφάλου, του αναπαραγωγικού και άλλων συστημάτων του εμβρίου και του παιδιού να προκαλέσει καταστροφή των νευρικών κυττάρων και του DNA, διάσπαση της προσοχής, διαταραχές στη μάθηση και άλλες νευρολογικές παθήσεις. Τα παιδιά είναι πολύ ευάλωτα. Μπορούμε όμως σε σημαντικό βαθμό να τα προφυλάξουμε από ένα σοβαρό κίνδυνο. Φτάνει να μάθουμε πώς. Αφού μας αγαπάτε, γιατί μας αχτινοβολείτε με τα Wi-Fi και τα κινητά σας τηλέφωνα. Έχουμε δικαίωμα στην υγεία και πρώτοι εσείς μπορείτε και πρέπει να μας προφυλάξετε. Στη βάση της αρχής της προφύλαξης, το Συμβούλιο της Ευρώπης, το Ευρωκοινοβούλιο, επιστήμονες, ιατρική και εκπαιδευτική σύλλογη στην Ευρώπη, συμβουλεύουν ότι θα πρέπει να μειωθεί η έκθεση των παιδιών στην ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπουν τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, tablets και οι συνδέσεις μέσω Wi-Fi, ιδίως στο σπίτι και στο σχολείο. Η έκθεση των παιδιών σε ηλεκτρονικό νεφος εγκυμονεί κινδύνους. Η χρήση των κινητών και συσκευών Wi-Fi από παιδιά μικρότερα των 14 ετών πρέπει να αποφεύγεται. Προφυλάξτε την υγεία και το μέλλον των παιδιών σας. Το ίδιο ισχύει και για την έγκυο. Οι έφηβοι ποτέ δεν βάζουν το κινητό στο υπνοδωμάτιο τους, στις τσέπες τους, στα μπράτσα ή κοντά στο στήθος τους. Πάντα χρησιμοποιούν hands-free και κρατούν το κινητό μακριά από το σώμα τους. Αξιοποιώ την τεχνολογία σωστά, γνωρίζω τους κινδύνους και δεν εξαρτώμαι από αυτή. Χρησιμοποιώ ενσύρματη σύνδεση για τον υπολογιστή του σπιτιού μου και ενεργοποιώ το Wi-Fi και τα δεδομένα κινητής τηλεφωνίας μόνο όταν χρειάζεται και ποτέ όταν τα παιδιά μου είναι κοντά. Δεν χρησιμοποιώ κινητό τηλέφωνο στο αυτοκίνητο όταν τα παιδιά μου βρίσκονται σε αυτό. Η έκθεση στην ακτινοβολία είναι πολύ μεγαλύτερη. Προστατεύω πάντα τα παιδιά μου. Η Γαλλία ήδη με νόμο απαγόρευσε τη χρήση Wi-Fi σε παιδικούς σταθμούς και σε χώρους όπου φιλοξενούνται παιδιά κάτω των τριών χρόνων. Επιτρέπει ελάχιστη χρήση στα σχολεία κάτω από αυστηρούς περιορισμούς. Στον υπηαγωγείο, στα σχολεία και στο σπίτι περνάμε τουλάχιστον το 75% του χρόνου μας. Απαιτεί μια ασφάλεια χωρίς αχτινοβολίες από Wi-Fi, κινητά, και άλλες ασύρματες συνδέσεις. Υγεία είναι δικαίωμα. Μη μας το στερείτε. Δεν έχουμε το δικαίωμα να ρισκάρουμε την υγεία των παιδιών μας αναμένοντας παθητικά τους άλλους να κάνουν κάτι. Ας ξεχάσουμε τι είναι βολικό για μας και ας τους χαρίσουμε το καλύτερο δώρο. Την υγεία τους, μετατρέποντας το σπίτι και το σχολείο σε όαση προστασίας. Το σπίτι μου είναι όαση αγάπης και ασφάλειας. Σβήνω τα Wi-Fi και άλλες ασύρματες συνδέσεις όταν δεν χρησιμοποιούνται και κυρίως όταν τα παιδιά είναι στο σπίτι και τα κλείνω πάντοτε το βράδυ. Αξιοποιώ το κουμπάκι on-off. Είναι τόσο απλό να μειώσω το χρόνο αχρίαστης έκθεσης. Επενδύω στην υγεία των παιδιών μου μακροχρόνια. Η ζωή και το μέλλον τους είναι στα δικά μας χέρια. Δώστε στα παιδιά ένα μοναδικό δώρο ζωής. Την υγεία τους. And all of that, that is on your website, uh, the committee's website. To... Pedi.com.cy. Uh, Pedi is P A I D I uh, dot C O M dot C Y. And you also have a video for pregnant women educating them, a one minute video, and um, brochures. I mean, a whole educational program so that parents have tools, really practical, yeah. actionable tools, instead of feeling overwhelmed by yeah. this issue. 
Σύμφωνα με τον Παγκόσμιο Οργανισμό Υγεία, η ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπεται από τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, τα WiFi και άλλε ασύρματε συσκευέ είναι πιθανώ καρκινογόνα για τον άνθρωπο. Ο πιθανό αυτό κίνδυνο είναι ακόμα μεγαλύτερο για το έμβριο, αφού αυτό αναπτύσσεται καθημερινά και είναι ιδιαίτερα ευάλωτο. Μία νέα ζωή μεγαλώνει μέσα μου και έχω ευθύνη να την προστατέψω. Έχω ευθύνη να διασφαλίσω ότι το παιδί μου θα αναπτυχθεί σωστά και θα γεννηθεί υγιέ. Λαμβάνω σοβαρά υπόψη τις συστάσεις των ειδικών και με απλά και αποτελεσματικά μέτρα προστατεύω το παιδί μου από τους πιθανούς κινδύνους. Περιορίζω σημαντικά την χρήση του κινητού τηλεφώνου και έχω απενεργοποιημένες τις προσβάσεις στο διαδίκτυο. Όταν χρειαστεί να το χρησιμοποιήσω, το τοποθετώ πάντα μακριά από την κοιλιά μου. Χρησιμοποιώ ενσύρματη σύνδεση στον υπολογιστή μου για να έχω ασφαλή πρόσβαση στο διαδίκτυο. Αποφεύγω την παθητική έκθεση κρατώντας αποστάσεις από αυτούς που χρησιμοποιούν κινητό τηλέφωνο ή άλλες ασύρματες συσκευές. Στο σπίτι ενεργοποιώ τις ασύρματες συνδέσεις μόνο όταν είναι ανάγκη και τις κρατώ πάντα κλειστέ κατά τη διάρκεια της νύχτας. Η ζωή και το μέλλον του είναι στα δικά σου χέρια. Έχεις ευθύνη και μπορείς να το προστατεύσεις. Yes, Theodora, I think also with the video which you prepare for teenagers is, uh, is a very important one. And uh, we tried, but so far not so successful. Uh, we, we didn't success our uh, goal to bring this video to school for teenagers because it shows how a teenager can Uh, use the technology in a safe way because we can't stop the teenagers of using mobile phones or using tablets or using all these things but what we have to do is to teach them Σύμφωνα με τον Παγκόσμιο Οργανισμό Υγεία, η ακτινοβολία που εκπέμπεται από τα κινητά τηλέφωνα, τα WiFi και άλλε ασύρματε συσκευέ είναι πιθανώ καρκινογόνα για τον άνθρωπο. Η τεχνολογία είναι μέρο τη ζωή μου. Γνωρίζω όμω καλά του κινδύνου τη ασύρματη επικοινωνία και ξέρω πώ να προστατεύω τον εαυτό μου. Η συνεχή και πολλαπλή έκθεση στην ακτινοβολία αυτή είναι πιθανό να έχει σοβαρέ επιδράσει στην ανάπτυξη και λειτουργία του κεφάλου του αναπαραγωγικού συστήματος, να προκαλέσει καταστροφή των νευρικών κυττάρων και του DNA, απόσπαση της προσοχής, διαταραχές στη μάθηση και άλλες νευρολογικές διαταραχές. Η κίνδυνη αυτή είναι ακόμη μεγαλύτερη για τους εφήβους, οι οποίοι βρίσκονται σε μια κρίσιμη φάση της ανάπτυξής τους. Προτιμώ τη χρήση σταθερού τηλεφώνου όταν βρίσκομαι στο σπίτι. Έχω απενεργοποιημένε τι προσβάσει μου στο διαδίκτυο αν τηλεφωνώ, όταν παρακολουθώ βίντεο, όταν ακούω μουσική ή όταν παίζω παιχνίδια. Χρησιμοποιώ ενσύρμα τη σύνδεση στον υπολογιστή μου για να έχω ασφαλή και γρήγορη πρόσβαση στο διαδίκτυο. Ενεργοποιώ τι ασύρματε συνδέσει μόνο όταν είναι απόλυτη ανάγκη και τι κρατώ πάντα κλειστέ κατά τη διάρκεια τη νύχτα. Σβήνω πάντα το κινητό μου όταν πάω για ύπνο, το κρατάω έξω από το υπνο δωμάτιο. Χρησιμοποιώ hands-free και κρατώ κινητό και άλλες ηλεκτρονικές συσκευές μακριά από το σώμα μου. Δεν τοποθετώ το κινητό τηλεφωνό στις τσέπες του παντελονιού ή κοντά στο στήθος. Αποφεύγω την παθητική έκθεση κρατώντας αποστάσεις από αυτούς που χρησιμοποιούν κινητό τηλέφωνο ή άλλες ασύρματες συσκευές. Δεν χρησιμοποιώ το κινητό στο αυτοκίνητο, σε αναλκυστήρες ή σε άλλους χώρους με χαμηλή λήψη. Εκεί η έκθεση στην ακτινοβολία είναι πολύ μεγαλύτερη. Η ζωή και το μέλλον είναι στα δικά μας χέρια. Ζούμε με την τεχνολογία, αλλά προσέχουμε να μεγαλώνουμε με υγεία. Δώστε στους εφήβους ένα μοναδικό δώρο ζωής, την υγεία τους. Θα προσπαθήσουμε να προσπαθήσουμε αυτό στο σχολείο, γιατί πραγματικά θεωρούμε ότι αυτό το σχολείο πρέπει να είναι εδωτικότητα, γιατί πολλοί από αυτούς είναι ήδη εδωτικότητα very addicted, very fascinated at, at least, but they are addicted to this technology. They have to, 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 to empower them to become, let us say, proud of themselves and that they control technology, not 
technology controlling them. This is, this is what the message that we want to pass, which is not easy. The best way, to my opinion, is to start educating the small children from the elementary school, even from the uh, nurseries. I mean, the, the small children have to transmit this, um, this culture, develop this culture. So, and gradually let them to embark in the technology, but knowing how to make proper use of this. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't manage, I have to admit, we didn't manage to, to establish this within the Ministry of Education yet. Uh, some years ago, in 2017 or 18, uh, the minister, which was at that time, it was a, a biologist himself, is, uh, Dr. Cadiz. I'm grateful to him because uh, the very moment I raised the issue of not installing wife in school and explaining to him because he could understand the biologic background of this request. Right. So he stopped this immediately. It was at the, at the point to, to open tenders to put wife in all schools. And she stopped. He stopped this and issued a decree which at least intervene at the level, up to the level of elementary school. Mm -hmm. But we want this to be expanded also to the other cases and also to the public, to the private school, which are not covered by this decree. Unfortunately, he left the ministry. And since then we struggle <laughs> to, to reinvent this uh, to bring this again uh, on surface and to try to do something. Because if we educate the small children, we invest for the future. Right. This is our, 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 and we have experience with passive smoking, for instance. We started at that time, again, it was uh, a good minister which, who understands the point. So we had again a video, we have leaflet, and uh, the teachers, uh, these were uh, brought to the school officially, and the teacher teach the small children in elementary school about what is passive smoking and how this could affect their health. And this happened before we have the legislation, which comes four years, five years later. And then the, the, ch the children were uh, getting this information, they understood, and they went to their homes, and once the one, the father or mother is smoking in front of them, the children react immediately and they said, we have the right to our health. Why you do you smoke in front of me? And we have a lot of complaints from parents calling us that to intervene in their private life. Oh. But uh, yeah, we explained to them that uh, the children on the other hand is, are their children. They, the parents, are responsible for them, but the children have the right to health and the, and the parents have to protect them. After two, uh, two years of intervention in this way, and we make a lot of campaign again, uh, at the end we make again a research uh, via questionnaires to see how the situation is changed compared to the previous one, where at the previous one we found out that uh, if I'm not wrong, 65% of the smoking parents at the, at the beginning of the campaign, we are, are smoking in front of their children in the houses, in, in their houses and in their car. This was the situation when it started. Two years later, when we recirculate these uh, questionnaires again, we found out that this figure is reduced to 25%. Wow. Only 25% of the parents continues to smoke in houses, in the cars. And two years later, we had the legislation at the end, which is prohibiting, of course, in public places, is prohibiting in car to smoke, but nobody can intervene in the house. But I can say uh, we didn't make a research again because we didn't have the funds, but I know now that the situation is is very much change in the houses. Very, very small proportion of the population is smoking in front of children in their homes. But this took 10 years 
of effort. Years. Yes. Uh, so the same, I think, is the same way we try to, to establish the new culture of wise, wise technology usage in homes. We propose to the parents that they should give a, a good example. They become example to their children. They should create uh, free zones, free time zones in their home where uh, no mobile are used, no computer are used for one, two hours, at least in the evening when all the family is together. So they learn that the technology has to be used in certain period of time, in certain period of time, they should not use and should, should not replace the real communication between parents and children. Right. Because we are missing this communication today. Everybody's, ah, ah, look, I'm speaking to the phone now. Uh, and then, of course, the, the poor kid is going also getting a tablet and everybody's happy. This is a situation that we see in many homes. And this is a situation we want to, to change. But it, it will take a lot of efforts, I know. I know. Well, I know, you know, in, in, in several countries, this is happening in different ways. So Krakow, Poland, uh, the mayor there has had the regular conference on electromagnetic fields, presenting yes. science, but they also have educational, uh, they have a day, a screen-free day, they have education for people. Yeah, yeah, you are right. I was part of this um, the previous year, I think, yes. I was oh. in Krakow, invited in this uh, special seminar. Yes, yes and I, uh, yes, they did fantastic work. Yes, I, I, I mean, we are not alone in the world. I mean, yes. and we learn it from each other's experience. Uh, we learn what are the problems, what are the obstacles, how we can overcome this. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's something which we have to do in cooperation with others. I think it's very important because good examples can be replicated somewhere else. This is uh, what we are doing and what we try to learn from other experience. And also your organization, Theodora, does a fantastic work with all this um, material that you, you collect, which is not only the scientific material, but also practical material. And uh, actually, uh, my committee is doing something similar. It tries to to collect all the scientific knowledge, which is uh, peer review studies, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we aim to distill out of this scientific knowledge, we want to distill information which can support, on one hand, a science-based decision-making provided to the politician, clear message, but saying to them, look, this is scientifically documented, it's not just we decide that right. this should be done. And on the other hand, uh, the other distillate out of this uh, review that we are doing is to give easy information, easy digestible information to parents, to population, tools, how to manage this issue. This is, this is what, because all our work in, as a scientific committee that we are, is based on science and on the precautionary principle. We have to combine them. And as scientists, we should not have a dilemma what we have to, we should not wait for the absolute proof. Is not this the case? Always when we judge uh, that these are certainties, these ignorances, we don't know this, we don't know that, we have to have in mind that we have to use the principle of public health, which first were established, and I'm proud to say this, by the ancient Greek doctors. Mm. The public health principles, should, we should always have in mind and we should balance between science and the principles. We have to use them together to get the best for our population, to be proactive and uh, prophylactic, as we said in Greece, for our population. Because if we want the absolute truth, the absolute uh, documentation, this 
will never happen and, and this very very uh, often happens in science to have right. different opinion but any any time we have to see do i have enough documentation for this risk then until i wait for the full proof i have to apply to do what i can do to minimize the exposure exposure is a key issue we have to minimize the exposure to the risk because there's Not, enough there's enough science that has it's enough science that is well documented when it is well documented we, it is unethical for us as scientists to say, look, it's not been fully established. We are not absolutely sure. The one says that, the other says, no. We have to judge this and to see if we have enough science to a certain extent, 70%, 90%, then we have to act now, not after right. 100 years as we did for the, for the passive smoking. To and for lead one, and asbestos. One, and for asbestos and for mercury. And for mercury, we have still the economic interests are uh, very, very strong. Uh, it looks very, uh, very strange that within the community, within the European Union, we prohibited mercury from the thermometers, we prohibited mercury from devices, okay? But we allow mercury to be used in the so-called uh, CFS lamps, the fluorescent lamps, mm -hmm. yeah? And I, I, I was at that time, we evaluated the risk of these uh, lamps when once they broken, of course, when they are not broken, it's not a problem, but we had a lot of exam examples those lamps to be to uh, that uh, lo those lamps were broken in uh, gymnastic center of schools or in the house because something uh, a toy or a, a ball goes to this lamp and breaks and when i was uh, i was member of the share committee of the european union at that time and we evaluated this for two years and we found out that once we have a broken lamp in a room, then the levels of mercury are very dangerous for the children, are very dangerous, especially for the, for the pregnant women. And I hoped at that time that it will be a reaction on this, that it would be a, a, a notice on the box of the lamp that be careful if this happens, then uh, if it's broken, take this precaution or go to the, this website and see how to deal with this because there is a special protocol how to deal with this. As a committee, we create a leaflet at the time. And this leaflet is also available on our, our website, but it's in, in Greek, where we explain where, how the people have to choose which economic lamps to put where that those lamp CFL should not be put in a child's room or in a small table where it can be easily broken. And we provide also information what the parent should do once this lamp is broken, how it should be clean. But there is no reaction till now. There is nothing on the lamp mentioning that those lamps contain mercury, be aware of this. Same with phones and wireless speakers and all these wireless yeah, devices. Yeah. I held my baby in a carrier and I would take the cell phone and put it in the pocket right on the back of the baby mm -hmm. of my daughter's because it was yeah. a pocket. I didn't mm -hmm. know that it shouldn't be sitting there. And sometimes I'd have earphones on to the cell phone with the phone radiating mm -hmm. directly against their bodies because Nobody knows. Nobody yes. told me. This is, this is what, what, what I urge in, in every lecture of mine. I always refer to a woman, uh, to a mother, which are uh, breastfeeding their child. They have their child in their arms yes. and they keep watching wireless tablet or mobile right. phone very close to the child. And I said, this is something which should not happen. 
Right. If you, uh, you, you, they offer the best gift to the child by offer this, their milk to them. But on the other hand, they radiate in, in, a, in, a, in an age which is so sensitive. The, the brain of the child is so sensitive. And they, they, they said, but look, I have to spend a lot of time breastfeeding and I have to do something. And I said, at least if you want, put a, a laptop in a distance and connect with a wire and watch this, not close to the child, but wireless or mobile uh, Wi-Fi or mobile data next to the child health is, is uh, unacceptable. And this is happening. I, I know, I mean, I, I have to confess, I, I only learned about this a decade ago and I myself did that at times. Not as much because yeah, yeah. there wasn't as much yeah. phone use, but I, uh, I, I think parents really have a right to know. And it's it, these three things that you're doing with policy, doctors, and yeah. educating parents are like the three-legged stool to make the change that's needed. Yeah, yeah. Because the, yes, this is exactly why we insist with the Medical Doctor Association, we ask the parliament uh, to provide the means, the legislative means, to make right. this campaign mandatory for the government, right. to be executed, to inform the people what are the risks and what are the tools which you can use to minimize right. this. Okay. And this is the the most important. Can I ask mm -hmm. a question about that? Because there's some questions from um, people who are on the webinar and thank you for joining okay. us for your of support. Course. I try but, to ask them. So are you going to be measuring, you talked about with passive smoke, how you measure the percentage of people that made changes. Are you doing any kind of measuring and data collection in terms of changing behavior with wireless and cell phones with parents and children? No, unfortunately we didn't do because uh, from 2011, uh, because of the economic crisis, the budget of our committee, because we had previously a small budget around 10,000 euros per year, 15,000 euros per year for doing some kind of research. But this was cut off. Our, our budget dropped from 70,000 euros per year, which was initially including one uh, scientific uh, assistant that we have, is the only person which is paid, uh, is dropped down to 20,000 euros per year. So we didn't have the, um, uh, the, the budget, the, the sources, economical sources to do this this work we would like to do this because it is very very important to show if you are policy and you are uh, let us say you are tools you are using to transfer this message are effective or not the only the only the only thing i can say is this that through the years, I, we realized that uh, a number of doctors have become very uh, aware of this and they are sensitive and they are advising their clients. Mm -hmm. We have a number of parents, a lot of parents, who um, come to us asking about material, asking questions, how I can do this, how I can do that, or mentioning us problems which happens around them. Uh, but we don't have measured them. We don't really, I don't know how effective is this, but at least we continue to work. We try to change a little bit what we are doing every year, the way you are doing, but that's it. So um, this is a situation that's happening all over the world. I mean, what you're doing, protecting children from toxic chemicals and exposures, is one of the most important things that needs to be done and yet has the most minimal funding, if any, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the, if any funding at all. And I know that many people are volunteering hours and hours into uh, the work. Yes. That's being done. I'm, uh, I would like to thank all my colleagues in the committee because they offer whatever is possible from their very limited free time, all are working, except me, which I'm uh, 
uh, I'm not working anymore. I am pensioner, so I have more time. But all of them are working from their heart to offer the best possible uh, to this mandate of, of the committee because we do believe. For me, it's a, it's a life target to protect the children, to, to do whatever is possible to protect the children because children is our future. And now I am very lucky that I am a grandmother with four fantastic uh, grandchildren. So in their eyes, I saw the eyes of all children. And I think uh, it's something I have to offer back because I had a good career. I have a chances to educate myself I had a full life. I'm grateful for this. And now I'm very happy that I can offer back and I will do this uh, as far as my health allows me to do this. Thank you so much. And our, our time is, is about over, but I want to add um, a couple comments from people saying, uh, uh, Stella, you're, you and your work are wonderful. Thank you very much for your goodwill, passion, persistence, and generosity. And a big thank you to everyone else who makes your website and the campaign materials available in English. Um, and someone all other wrote, um, uh, you pulled the, the rank of ancient Greek doctors promoting the precautionary principle. That is insightful. Um, perhaps we in other countries need to think about this as role models and heroes um, to act uh, you know, on this, uh, this action to benefit the community. And um, uh, we need to look at how to expand this concept to make it even more attractive and, and actionable. And, and I have to say, I think that what you've done with your committee is, is, is really done that because you've translated the information so it's understandable to people and help them figure out steps that they can do so that they really mm -hmm. can take steps. And it's really a model for the entire world. So I, I thank, thank you. Thank you all the people commenting to me. It's, uh, it's very important uh, for me. And uh, of course, it's not only for me, for, for the whole committee of yes. mine. Uh, but I, I'm grateful also to all uh, colleagues all over the world, uh, especially uh, Dr. Davis, uh, Theodora, and also uh, Piero Lercher, Dr. Piero Lercher from the Austrian Medical Association, yes. and uh, the president of Medical Association and uh, in Cyprus and in Austria for all the support and the trust to our committee. And I think we all together can share the experience can share the enthusiasm to do something to work, even if it is difficult, even if we have a lot of obstacles in our ways. But I think we can pass through uh, at the end. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I'm honored. Night. Uh, for uh, Here is night, but it's uh, noon in, in the States, I know. So yeah. good afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye.